Okay, hey guys, it's your boy, Dark Raikou here, with what if Issei was trained by Shanks? Yes, uh, Shanks from One Piece. Um, before I go on, I am kind of sick, I am kind of sneezing, and I am kind of, my throat kind of hurts. <clears throat> Not the point, let me actually start on to the what if, if I can try it. If it doesn't come out that good, then I won't try again. And wait until I actually get better, but yeah. So yeah, um... Let me begin to this water. Let me shut the fuck up. But yeah, so I am get, I am eating a cough drop. Not eating. I'm like, yeah, you get the point. I have a cough drop in my mouth. So if you hear it in my mouth, kind of my teeth or something, I'm fucking it up or something. Um, yeah, but not the point. Mostly something for me to not uh well uh cough or whatever in the middle of the video. But yeah, you get the point. So, this what if is called, what if Issei was trained by Shanks? Now, I have some other what ifs that I have really done. And I wanted to actually continue it on. It's just, well, right now I don't have that much time to actually continue and go watch and pre-watch and blah, blah, blah. You get the point. Because I've been really sick. Well, this past week I've been kind of sick. Well, not kind of, really fucking sick because my throat hurt like most of the time. When I did a uh, record, it was it called, what if... Uh, what was that one? What if that I just did? Oh, shit, I can't even remember. Wait. What if Issei was the reincarnation of Zoraki Kampachi? I wanted to continue that on, but I didn't do that. Because, well, uh, yesterday I went to kind of finish some stuff for school. And then when I got to school, I kind of was kind of helping out my team for something. And then after that, I had to come back home. And, well, today... It was not that hectic. I just went to kind of like somehow fucking clean the fucking uh, cor uh, corrosive and whatever fucking yellow stuff is on my fucking uh, lights. You know, when it kind of, when you overuse your lights, you kind of grab that corrosive stuff into your lights. But whatever. Yeah, I was trying to figure out how you clean that. I figured it out. It's just I'm going to have to wait until fucking drive. But you get the point. Not the point. Let me begin this is water. So yeah, this is called... Did I already set this? Shit, I can't remember. But, yeah. This is called What If uh, Issei Was Trying By Shanks. But not the point. Let me begin. This is What If. I know I'm just rambling on right now. Blah, 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 blah. And, yeah. Let me begin. But, not the point. So, we go into Issei. Issei? Well, not really Issei. Mostly someone that was just coming out of... Well, mostly woke up. He had red long... Well, not red long hair. He had, like, short red hair brownish eyes a scar in one of his eyes and of course having a coat black coat of course having a sword next to him but right now wearing kind of a white like white button up shirt that's kind of brandy buttoned up like three buttons are kind of not three four buttons are unbuttoned on the top showing off his muscles of course this is where he's wearing kind of these shorts and wearing sandals but yeah this is where, well, he's walking around because when he got to this place, he didn't know where the fuck he was exactly at. Because, well, in this world, it's kind of confusing. He can send so many powerful, well, beings in this world by just using operation hawking. But, of course, this is where, well, he doesn't know where the fuck they're at entirely. But he doesn't want to fight them. Entirely, he just wants to explore this world. He doesn't even know how he got here exactly that well. But, of course, this is where, well... He doesn't care for right now. He's just going to explore because that's what a pirate does. Explore most of the time. But yeah. This is where, well. He kind of heard cries of, like, help by a girl. And of course, this is where, well. He kind of rushed towards the site of what is happening. And what he sees is mostly a little boy. A girl behind him kind of, well kind of passed out like she's unconscious entirely she has orange hair and kind of purplish eyes well she had orange hair her eyes weren't open that much but of course they were well she was kind of passed out also kind of crying a little bit but yeah this is where well the boy who was standing in front of her was the only mostly looked like he was uh protecting the girl behind him he had brownish hair these what's it called brownish light eyes and of course this is where well they're kind of like similar to gold or little bit, but not really. But this is where well He seems to try to protect the girl behind him. Now of course this is hor a horrible evil creature right now in front of the boy. This is where well the creature is saying, Ah, you're trying to protect the little freaking angel behind you. Well that's too bad. The boy doesn't understand what 
uh, the creature means by angel. But of course, he's not letting this monster like attack the girl. This is where, well, the monster says, we're dead. This is where, well, the creature sends his long claws at, well, the boy. And the boy says, I won't, I won't let you hurt anyone. This is where, well, he kind of closes his eyes and of course screams saying, no. This is where, well, something of a wave of pressure was felt throughout mostly not everywhere but mostly felt pretty close to the man the man widened his eyes feeling the power that the boy just released conquer well mostly supreme color of conquerors hawking this is where well a goldenish light did kind of like release from this person like color a power this is where <coughs> well it kind of stunned the creature the creature almost passed out from this power this is where well the creature they what the no you little brat this is where, well, the little boy seems to be really tired from releasing that much power. But of course, it where, well, before the monster even tried to hurt the kid, its arms were already cut off, both of them. This is where, well, the creature didn't understand why, but there was a man right now standing in front of the a younger boy behind him. This is where, well, the man had his sword unsheathed a little bit. And this is where, well, well, Bernie being unsheathed, but yeah, but it looks like he was putting it back. This is where, well, the monster says, what, another human? You damn humans always get in my way. Let me just kill the angels so I can become powerful. You damn people. You know what, I'll kill you too. This is where the monster re tries to regen its arm, but didn't understand why it couldn't. This is where, well, a weird color of energy was on the sword, and then the sword's energy disappeared. This is where the old man said, you dare hurt a young kid and a girl. You are kind of disgusting. For that, you shall die. This is where, well, the creature says, And you think you can stop me? Ha! Yeah, right. A human like you can't even stop me. This is where, well, its head was already just taken off its body in an instant. Uh, shh, turn into dust, but yeah. This is where, well, the older man right now had his arm kind of out. Right now kind of glowing with this reddish energy. Until it disappears, but yeah. But this is where, well, the older man looks behind him and sees the young boy. Of course, he was surprised to feel someone else has, was a call, awaken Conqueror's Hawking. Supreme color of Conqueror's Hawking, it seems the supreme color of Conqueror's Hawking was a goldenish type. Probably a golden ruler. But this is where, well, he was surprised. So, of course, this is where he waited until the boy and the girl to wake up. This is where, well. The girl kind of woke up, kind of scared, and wondering why there was a man here. Until the man says, you okay or something? This is where, well, he said kind of friendly and other stuff. And this is where the girl kind of said, yeah, I am. Uh, what just happened? You should probably go home, kid. This is where the girl nodded, of course, is leaving. Of course, didn't see Issei because, well, mostly Issei was on the other side of the man. But yeah, mostly behind him. But yeah, because Shanks did notice that this girl kind of woke up. But yeah, yes, this person is Shanks. But this is where, well, the person waited until, well, the brown-haired boys to wake up. This is where the brown-haired boy managed to wake up, kind of wondering where he's at. It's kind of dark, and this is where fire is right now appearing right in front of him. Because there's actually a fire can. But this is where, well, he says, where, where am I? This is where, well, someone said, oh, you're awake already. This is where, well, the brown-haired boy uh, turns around to see the kind of older man. Older man with brownish eyes and red hair. His red hair seems so amazing for Issei. Because he's never seen someone with red hair ever in his life. He's seen orange hair. That was a girl a while ago. But he doesn't know where the girl is at. But of course he sees a red hair man. This is where... Uh, this boy says... Um, excuse me. Do you know where the girl is at? Oh, she already left. I don't know where she went. But yeah. I couldn't just leave you staying here. And yeah. This is where... Well, the boy nodded. This is where, well, the boy says, uh, I don't know what happened. This is where, well, Shink seems surprised, seeing how the boy doesn't know what he did. Then again, for being such a young, well, mostly he looks to be like five year old or even six year old, he's not that surprised for a five or six year old. Well, he is surprised, but he's not surprised that the six to five year old doesn't know what he just did. But then again, he has heard of what's a car 
his mostly his own successor, not knowing what he fucking did half the time. But yeah, the rubber boy he mostly thinks about. A rubber boy right now is kind of probably fighting against his brothers or something. That's what. Well, he then kind of sees the boy smile. Well, mostly smile at Shanks and say, "Well, thank you. I don't know what happened, but I can see that you're a friendly person." That's where Shanks kind of smiles at the boy, and of course, the smile that well, mostly the boy kind of radiates is similar to that of well, a rubber boy. So yeah, mostly a rubber boy with a straw hat. <laughs> That's where, well, uh, mostly Shang said, so what's your name, kid? That's where the kid say, oh, my name is Issei Hyoto. <laughs> he smiles. That's where, well, Shanks nodded. That's where Shanks says, the name's Shanks then. That's where, well, Issei say, Shanks? What a cool name. So, mister, uh, who are you exactly? That's where, well, Shanks doesn't know if this world knows anything about the Yonkos. The four sea emperors, or even the Grand Line, or even in the, sea, uh, what's it called, East Blue, West Blue, North Blue, or even South Blue. He doesn't even know if this place even knows about Devil Fruits, or the power of Hawking. So, of course, he just says that, um, he's just a wandering traveler. That just managed to come, up, uh, come upon this sight of this horrible creature trying to eat you. It's where, well, he says, oh. Thank you. This is where he remembers and then gets scared. This is where he gets scared of the monster. This is where he says, where's the monster? Oh, it's already dead, kid. You don't need to worry about that. The, well, mostly Shank said. This is where, well, he says, smiles and says, well, thank you. Um, I should probably be getting home. This is where, well, Shanks noticed that Issei seems to be a little bit scared of going home because it is kind of dark. And Shank said, if you want, I can actually, like, take you home. He, uh, mostly Shank said. This is where, oh, you say, really? Wow, thank you, mister. This is where, oh, both Shanks and, well, Issei kind of, like, start walking away after Shanks kind of putting out the fire, but, yeah. This is where, oh, they kind of, like, walk, and, of course, this is where, oh, Shanks kind of asks Issei if his parents have ever told him about, like, the sea or something. This is where, well, Issei said, uh... I think I remember hearing my mom or dad, I can't remember who was it again, talking about, well, something about something that's called like the East Blue and then something about calling the Grand Line. I don't know why, but they say something about that, but I can't remember what they're actually talking about. That's what, oh, Shanks nodded and said, I see, okay. Well, that's quite interesting. That's where, well. Shanks thinks that whoever these people are, they must there must be from the what's it called Grand Line, or might be from the East Blue, or just one of the one of the four blues. This is where well, he can't tell, but he will kind of figure out who exactly these people are. So when Shanks managed to get towards Issei's house, Issei points at the house, the kind of big looking house. It's kind of a medium house, but this is where well he points to the house and says, "That's my house." This is where, well, Shanks says, oh, I see. Well, then let's go. This is where, well, Issei nodded, and of course, this is where Issei brings Shanks to the house. This is where, well, Issei knocks at the door, and of course, this is where, well, two people kind of open it. Of course, this is where, well, a woman that kind of has brownish hair, and of course, an older man that seems to kind of have whitish hair. Kind of this whitish hair with a tint of, what's it called? Kind of this silverish color, mostly in his eyes. Like lighter silverish color, but yeah. This is where, well, when, uh, what's it called, both of them kind of open the door, they kind of, well, widen their eyes to see Issei and Shanks. Well, they don't know who exactly Shanks is, unless the older man does, which he kind of has a worry expression on his face. And Shanks notices really quick. This is where, well, the older woman kind of hugs Issei and you say, Issei, Kun, where have you been? This is where, well, Issei said, oh, I was kind of at the park and I kind of fell asleep. He didn't want to talk about the monster because he then thinks that his parents won't actually believe him. But yeah, but this is where the older man, those next to the woman, kind of has okay, like whitish hair and silverish eyes. Kind of this is where well, his glasses would cover up his silver eyes if it wasn't for Shanks noticing also and noticing the power that this man kind of erupts from him. Kind of mostly, it seems that this person isn't trying to use a power to try to push Shanks away, well, mostly away from his family. This is where, well, 
The older man says, well, honey, I need you to go inside with Issei. This is where, well, Issei kind of noticed his father's stern look. And this is where, well, his wife noticed, well, mostly Shanks. And noticed, well, her husband. This is where, well, she then kind of said, no, this must be, we might have to go back to the, what's it called, world. This is where, well, she kind of said quietly towards, well, mostly the older man. Well, Shanks managed it here, but of course, it worked. well, he was kind of confused. This is where the older man kind of like narrowed his eyes towards his son. And this is where, well, he then says, shh, I'll talk to him. This is where, well, the wife of mostly the older man kind of left already with mostly Issei. This is where the older man kind of closes his door. And of course, this is where, well, he then sees, well, Shanks, mostly, they both, both their eyes connect. Mostly, what's it called? Silver white eyes kind of like silverish white eyes with whitish hair but of course silver white eyes connected towards dark brown eyes this is where well both of them are just looking at each other this is where well shanks said so if it isn't that 500 well almost 1 billion berry bounty well mostly not 500 really mostly almost 1 billion what's it called bear, uh, berry well, Bounty Berry Pirate, aren't you? You are at almost seven, well, mostly 700 million. Isn't that right, White Hair? This is where, well, the person now known as White Hair, mostly his Pirate Bounty name and also mostly his Pirate Bounty, well, numbers. He looked at Shanks and said, what do you want, Red Hair? What are you doing? And why were you near my son? This is where, well, the older man how known as Shanks, well, oh, we already know Shanks, what the fuck I'm going on with, but yeah, kind of looks at mostly white hair, or also known as, well, Shiro, yes, his name was Shiro, that's where, well, well, Goro Shiro, that was his full name, uh, Goro D. Shiro, that's where, well, the person says, what do you want, Shanks, that's where, well, Shanks said, so, I didn't know you actually came to this world. All I remember is when your, what's called, crew, or most of your crew kind of got defeated by Kaido. You were gone, or mostly trying to be executed by the Marines and then disappear on a boat. So, who exa how exactly did you get to this place, or where are we exactly? This is where, well, Goro looks at, well, mostly Shanks, and this is where, well, he sighs and says, "We uh, well, this place is unknown, but it seems to be a different dimension, probably a parallel dimension towards, well, the other world, mostly towards, well, <laughs> sorry, parallel dimension towards the other world, mostly the pirate world. This world has multiple creatures like monster, demons, angels, fallen angels, and whatever bullshit there is now. Probably also gods, and I don't care. This is where, well, Shanks nodded and says, quite interesting. Do you know that your son already unlocked Conqueror Saki? This is where, well, Goro widened his eyes until he kind of narrows him and says, how do you know about that? Because the boy kind of fought against some monster creature. Luckily for him, he managed to stun the monster creature, but it wasn't enough to knock him out. But you're welcome because I saved the kid. This is where, well. Oh. Goro nodded and said, okay, well, what do you want exactly, Shanks? Hmm, since I don't have a way to get back to my own crew until I find my own way, I guess I would like to train the boy. He has so much potential of conquer hawking and mostly the other types of hawking. And so, well, Shiro kind of his eyes until he said, fine, I'll let you train him. That's where, well, Shanks was surprised. He wasn't think thinking that another pirate would actually let what's it called another pirate train his own son. This is where, well, Shanks said, really? I'm surprised. Why will you do that? Goro says, because I never did unlock Conqueror's Hawking. Wait, what? You didn't? Well, I did, it's just I never did train it. And right now, I have a job in this world, and I can't really train my son that much. Well, that's surprising, since if I can remember right, your conquer shocking was actually silver color, wasn't it? The silver ruler. Your son is actually a golden ruler. <sighs> well, 
I wasn't expecting that, but I'm happy for my son to actually become a golden ruler, I guess. This is where, oh, Shank smiles at Goro and says, well, that's quite interesting. Still, so, what is Issei's full name? Issei D. Shiro. Much for right now, it's called Hiro because of mostly my wife's name. I see. Would he also take the name Shiro even though he doesn't have white hair? <sighs> my white hair doesn't actually appear to me until I actually became older. This is where, well, mostly Shane's was surprised. So, you weren't always white hair? What color was your original hair? He kind of smiles at, uh, what's it called? Mostly the person named Goro. Goro says, <sighs> it was black, okay? It became white after a while. Mostly after my parents explained to me that my hair would turn white later or turn to a different color. Luckily, it didn't turn pink. Actually, no, it did turn pink and then it white. This is where Goro kind of mentioned that out loud until he tries to cover his mouth until, well, Shinx just chuckles at him. This is where Goro just growls at him and says, screw off, brat. This is where, oh, Shinx just chuckles and says, oh, come on, it's not that bad, is it? This is where, oh, Goro says, shut up for a second. I'm guessing you don't have anywhere to live, so you can live here for right now. Just don't scare my wife and don't scare my kid. That's the word. Well, Goro has this very stern look at, well, Shanks. Shanks says, I know, I know, I know. This is where, well, this is where, well, Shiro said, well, other than that, you can come in. This is where, well, Shanks chuckles, but yeah. Now, of course, Goro and Shanks are complete the different ages. Shanks is actually the age of what's it called? So, Shanks right now is actually 27. It's during the time he met, what's it called, Luffy, but yeah. But Goro is actually the age of being 29. So, of course, a little bit older than Shanks, but yeah. This is where, well, Shanks has actually been training, uh, what's it called, Issei for a while. Because Goro had mostly a job to do, and yeah. While, well, mostly, uh, Shanks met, what's it called, Goro's wife being, uh, what's it called, Mika. Mika Hyoro. Who was actually from a royal Hyoro family. Mostly in the blue. Mostly not in the east blue. But mostly in the what's it called. North blue. She was actually a home or mostly part of a family. That was called the Hyoro. They were actually a natural celestial family. But yeah. Yes. Mostly Issei is going to be part of the celestial dragons. Well yeah. Part of the celestial dragons. So of course yes. Mika was actually part of the celestial dragons. She was a noble family that was quite uh, respected by all of the different families. From being noble to commoner to even slaves and even the Celestial Dragon. They respect the Hyoto so much. They saw them to be really, really kind to anyone, being any different species or any type. They were also quite very powerful in either business, power in general, and other stuff, but yeah. But of course, with all that happening, mostly Mika wasn't the type to always be a fighter. Even though she was a pretty good fighter, she didn't really like fighting that much. But yeah, she had what's it called basic armament hawking that was pretty powerful. And of course, basic opposition hawking to be able to dodge attacks and sense and dodge them at the same time. But of course, she wasn't as powerful as her husband, who was kind of 700 million what's it called berries in the making of being one of the strongest was to call Yonkos or what it became a Yonko level uh mostly a, a Yonko level pirate if it wasn't for Kaido but yeah and the fact that well mostly Shiro was becoming a little bit older but yeah nah he was still kind of human but yeah he was kind of human not going to well explain what the species he is but not the point but of course this work well Issei, oh well, mostly not Issei, but mostly Shiro. He does have a double fruit. I will mention that later. And yes, well, he will give it to Issei, but don't worry about that. But of course, Issei is right now training with Shanks and kind of playing with him, but yeah, because Issei never had any other friends. And of course, the girl that he protected, they weren't actually friends entirely. But of course, they were, well, he is kind of training with Shanks in what's it called armament hawking and of course opposition hawking, even trying to train in his conquest hawking. Which Issei does have so much will to actually try to protect his family. Because that's the, that's the only people that he ever knows. 
and of course, kind of meeting Shanks, it's kind of someone that he also wants to protect, but yeah. Of course, showing off his conquerors talking to uh, mostly Shanks, Shanks can feel the power, and of course, mostly it became stronger. Probably the will to actually protect him also, which made Shanks kind of chuckle, uh, well, not chuckle, chuckle because the fact that Issei is mostly a strong will boy. He might be as powerful as his father one day if he ever goes to, well, mostly the parallel dimension that he's from. Mostly the pirate world. But of course, this is where Issei trains in armament hawking, even was it called opposition hawking, but yeah. At such a young age, mostly Issei was actually the age of six. Well, and well, yeah, he was not six, seven. But he didn't go to school at that time because he didn't really want to. He wanted to instead train. But of course, Mika did tell him to go to school because learning was also very powerful knowledge. And she would have, well, mostly she made Issei go to school. And if Shanks kind of declares that he wanted to train the boy, Mika would have used a frying pan with the most strongest hawking ever in basic hawking and smack the shit out of either Shanks or Goro getting in the way for Issei to learn. Yes, mostly both Shanks and Goro were fearing well Mika because she might have just had basic armament hawking, but it was so powerful that it probably knocked the fuck out of Kaido and then knock him out for the, a couple of days later. But yeah, don't worry about that. But of course, this is where, well, her power of anger was on another level. It was over 9,000. So, just get it. But of course, this is where, well, mostly Shanks kind of just uh, helped Goro around the house. But yeah, of course, this is where, well, Goro was now the age 30. And yes, Shanks was kind of age 28 in this world. But yeah, of course, Mika was 29. But yeah, but this is where, well. Goro and mostly Shanks kind of talks about mostly the pirate world and of course how well mostly Shanks wondering if Goro will ever go back to the pirate world or if there's a way to go back. It's where well Goro explains that he will not go back because well mostly he wants to kind of uh, stay here in such a safe place even though it's not that safe but who cares. He will protect his family. It's better here because they don't know about his like criminal record. And he'd rather just stay here for a while. If ever if ever this place kind of goes down, he will figure out how to get back to the pirate world and just try to live there. I swear, well, Shanks nodded. Shanks didn't see Goro as a different person from, well, mostly the records and mostly stories that was told about on him. Mostly Goro, also known as Shiro, also known as White Hair Pirate, mostly different from what to call red hair pirates from, well, Shanks, was told that, well, mostly Goro was, or Shiro was mostly not a ruthless person. He was a very cold person. His personality was very frosty, <laughs> very cold at that point. It was, his hawking was so powerful. It was like super hawking, yes, but it had this tint of like this cold kind of personality. Or not even cold personality, cold uh, power. Towards it, but yeah. He heard of ice abilities, like an ice devil fruit from Alkaji, who is mostly an emerald and what's it called? The Marines. But he has heard that mostly Alkaji could never go against Shiro because of Shiro's power of his own basic ice and well, mostly ice hawking, but yeah. But of course, that wasn't the point, but yeah. This is where, well, Shanks can see that Goro's kind of different from mostly his past life of him being a pirate, but yeah. This is where, well, Shanks kind of wonders how he even got defeated by Kaido. This is where, well, Sh Shiro didn't really want to explain any of that. Instead, he just wanted to live here peacefully, so just forgetting about a lot of things. So yeah. But of course, this is where, well. But of course, this is where, well. They were talking, but yeah. Now, Issei went to what's it called elementary school, but yeah, or it's a primary school. I don't remember in Japan, whatever they're called, but mostly in, I'm just going to call it elementary, okay? But this is where, well, Issei goes to elementary, and this is where, well, he kind of meets a bunch of kids, which not many people kind of like him that much, but yeah, because, well, he's mostly kind of quiet and kind of very shy and awkward to even talk to anyone, but yeah, this is where, well. He's just going through elementary school, trying to figure out how to make friends. <laughs> he doesn't know how to make friends, okay? And then the fact that his parents did tell him not to use any of the hockings, well, see, 
Shank said that he can use Aerosation Hawkins, that's just to dodge any attacks from anyone, but not to use his Hawkins against, well, mostly anyone entirely. Mostly, if you're in trouble, yes, use it, but if you're not in trouble, life and death situation, then don't use it, okay? Just use Arborization. Does it work? Well, you say not, it's in this work when Isaac kind of went to school. Yeah, he was kind of bored, very bored. Him learning really sucked for him because, well, he didn't really have the time span to even care about that much, but yeah. But of course, it worked. well, he's going to, well, try to learn and other things, but it's not that great. But we go into Issei kind of being outside the mostly school on recess, but yeah. A bunch of kids are playing, talking, and other stuff. Now, does it work? Well, Issei didn't really kind of join up with any of the kids, so of course he instead got to a swing and kind of started swinging. Now, of course, he wasn't alone because next to him was actually a girl with kind of what's it called? Now, of course, this is where, well, it seems to be a girl kind of next to him, but of course, she's like swinging. And of course, this is where, well, she's looking out towards seeing a bunch of kids literally playing. She seems to have two ponytails. Well, see, so yeah, two ponytails near both of her. Well, mostly one in her kind of side of her head and the other one. But yeah, her hair is kind of a palish, pinkish kind of, uh, well, mostly a palish, pinkish kind of color. But yeah, this is where, well. She is looking this way. Well, her eyes are kind of blue, like a bluish color, but yeah. This way, well, she's wearing this kind of blackish dress, but yeah. Mostly, she her two ponytails does have ribbons on top of her head, but yeah. This is where, well, there's really not a, what's it called, a school uniform for this school, but yeah. Because it's kind of lower down, but don't worry about that. This is where, well, she seems to be sighing and kind of also wondering how to make friends. Issei does notice this, and of course, they basically, yeah, they're basically just swinging on the swing, very slowly, but yeah, of course, they're not talking because, well, they don't really know how to make friends, <laughs> but yeah, they're kind of awkward for being kids, so yeah, that's where, well, mostly, the girl that noticed Issei after Issei kind of swinging for a while, that's where Issei is kind of bored out of his mind because he wants to go play with the other kids, it just, he doesn't know how to do that, but that's where, well, Issei also wants to kind of go train and how to use armor, well, mostly armament hawker and even armor station hawking with his uncle. Which he calls his uncle mostly Uncle Redhead, but yeah. Now, of course, Shanks kind of chuckles with the name, but yeah. Because, well, this remind him of him being a pirate, but yeah. This is where, well, the girl seems to kind of notice Issei, and Issei seems to have a, have a bored expression, but also kind of be looking at the distance and right now thinking. This is where, well, the girl seems to kind of notice him, but of course, doesn't seem really to care. This is where, well, the bell has rung, and of course, a bunch of kids are going back inside. And of course, the where, well, the girl is also going, well, inside. This is where, well, Isig does follow along, but yeah. Now, of course, the where, well, we go into a time skip of later on. This is where, well, Isig is kind of like waiting for either his parents to kind of come and pick him up. Now, of course, he doesn't know if he has to walk home or this is. Maybe he waits for red hair, but of course it worked well. He kind of heard us kind of like cry a little bit, and of course it worked well. He decides to go check out who is crying or whatever, and of course it worked. What he saw in his sight it was mostly these older looking kids kind of bullying this girl. The same girl that he kind of noticed when he was next to mostly the swing. Of course, she seems to be crying and trying to grab like this stuffed bear that this person has right now holding up. This is where, well, he says, huh? Well, you want the stuffed bear? Well, you're gonna have to get a little brat. Come on, jump, jump. This is where, well, the other kids seem to be chuckling. One guy seems to have a beanie on top of his head and, of course, covering his eyes. Of course, another person has kind of longish blackish hair. And, of course, the older man looks to have, well, any standard looking bully. Okay, just think of anything, okay? <laughs> but, of course, this is where the girl is crying and, of course, this is where her eyes are getting teary. This is where, well, she's trying to get the stuffed bear back from, well, all these people, of course, this stuff, the stuff bear is being hanged on by his legs, and of course, the girl isn't tall enough to grab it, but yeah, this is where the guys are chuckling, this is where, well, Issei decides to step in, he did remember getting told not to use his, well, Conqueror's Hawking, which he would have loved to use it, but he doesn't know he might knock out the girl instead, so of course, he kind of uh, asked them to go uh, to leave her alone and just give her back the stuffed bear. And that's where the three bullies seems to be in eighth grade or something, and they kind of notice the kid. 
This is where they scoff and say, huh? And what are you going to do about it? Isik said, uh, kick your ass, I guess. This is where, well, Isik kind of said confidently. Well, confidently, and at the same time, not knowing maybe. <laughs> this is where, well, this kid just scoff, and this is where the other kid says, get him then. This is where, well, the two guys just rush at Isik, and Isik notices this, which he decides to use opposition, not going to dodge a punch and a tackle from this older dude. This is where, well, the uh, tackle that was going to grab Issei, Issei mostly jump over him, and of course instead tackle the other guy. This is where the other guy say, what the hell are you doing, bro? This is where the other dude said, oh shit, damn it, that little brat. This is where Issei starts rushing towards the older man, and this is where the older man, well mostly not older man, older looking kid, the kid with the bear, this is where the guy says, Ugh, what die, you little brat? This is where he was about to punch Issei, and Issei did notice his punch, and this is where he was using opposition hockey, until he actually figured out something. He saw a glimpse of mostly something actually coming behind the older looking kid, like someone was about to kick the kid. Which it did happen after, well, Issei noticing the punch. This is where he dodges to the right, but this is where someone appeared behind the older looking kid, kicking the kid in the head and, of course, pushing his head down to the ground. This is where, well, uh, mostly the person gets his head smashed to the ground and of course let's go of the bear an accident This is where you say you managed to catch the bear and of course where he didn't let the bear kind of fall down to the ground Which you notice the bear kind of being a little bit creepy, but at the same time very cute and his appear Well mostly in his opinion, but yeah But of course it's mostly what the bear kind of looks like it looks to be a half half scary half kind of cute But yeah, mostly in his opinion it looks kind of cool and well everything but yeah of course, the work well. The girl is actually stuck crying because she noticed what the Issei trying to do, and mostly someone appearing behind the older looking kid. Seems to be someone also at the same age as both of the other two kids. This work well. She smiles, of course, with such a toothy grin, and of course, this is where she says, "Are you two okay?" This is work well. She kind of asked for mostly the girl and Issei. This is where Issei nodded. This is work well. The girl smiles until mostly well. The older looking kid managed to get up and says, why you little brats? This is where, well, the girl says, huh? I thought I'd kick you down to the ground. You should be knocked out. This is where, well, she was surprised. The girl has kind of longish blackish hair. Well, not that long, but of course, it's where, well, her hair also kind of has like a red tint of color, but yeah. This is where, well, her eyes are kind of red a little bit, but yeah. This is where the girl seems to be scared, mostly the blondish girl. She kind of froze. The blackish hair girl also froze. Issei didn't freeze. He kind of got quite annoyed. This is where the other two looking guys managed to get to his friend and say, Dude, are you okay? This is where, well, the other man, well, mostly the group of the leader of the bullies, kind of grabbed his face and his nose and noticed blood. And this is where he says, You little brats, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to throw your bodies into little, I'm going to throw your bodies into a bag and then throw into the river. This is where all of them get scared except for Issei. Issei quite gets annoyed. This is where, oh, the older looking kid goes straight towards mostly the girl, mostly the girl that came behind him and tried to, well, grab her to try to kill her. This is where, well, he wasn't really thinking in how bullies are. This is where Issei notices and of course this is where he then kind of throws the stuff there, pushes the girl out of the way. And this is where, well, the girl was surprised. This is where, well, Issei then appears right in front of the bully. This is where his hand kind of turns invisible color. When a visible color appears, mostly being goldenish color. But this is where, well, it turns invisible. This is where, well, he says, shut the hell up. This is where, well, Issei doesn't really know cuss word, but you can just say that, shut the heck up. This is where, well, Issei managed to clock this person in the face. Right now, since he didn't have armament hawking, but it's invisible and can barely be seen by those who doesn't know anything about armament hawking. It's it's a pretty powerful punch that he knocked the shit out of the bully. The bully gets knocked out cold. This is where the other two say, oh, hell no. Nah. This is where they kind of just shake their heads and start running away from like fucking crazy. This is where Issei was surprised that he knocked out the bully until he kind of realized, yes, he might be a little bit stronger than normal kids. This is where the girl and even the other girl are kind of surprised. Why in their eyes? This is where, well, Issei says, maybe not using armament hockey would be the best. That's the work, well, because he knows that he's a little bit stronger than normal kids. For some reason, his, uh, well, for some reason himself, he was always kind of strong. And was able to kind of bend metal at six years old. Which, mostly, his father seems to be really proud. His mother seems to be kind of afraid. <laughs> but yeah, Shanks just gave him a thumbs up. That's the work, well. 
he say he thinks that maybe adding what's called armor hockey was probably a bad idea. <laughs> but yeah, does it work well? Uh, someone chuckles and says, "Hey, he say does it work well?" He say kind of looks up and does it where he noticed was it called his uncle, mostly red hair. This is where he says, says, "Red hair, uncle, red hair." This is where or mostly oh, Ojin San or Ojin San. Yeah, I think that's how. Uncle, is it isn't Uncle Ojin San? I don't remember. Ojin San, red hair, mostly he said. This is where well, red hair Ojin San, whatever. Blah, I can't remember. I don't care. Okay, this is where well, uh, Shanks chuckles and sees Issei literally jump up and hug him. But yeah, this is where well, Shanks chuckles and then sees the two mostly girls. And this is where he says, "Are you two okay?" This is where well, the girl seems to just nod slowly. Until Issei does not, and when well, Mosi notice what to do, this is where he kind of grabs the stuffed bear out of the girl's hand and kind of give it towards the girl. This is where the blonde hair girl. This is where she seems to notice what Issei is doing, and she kind of grabs it and hugs and says, "Thank you." This is where she said kind of quietly, until she kind of hear what to call someone calling her name. This is where well, a person kind of appears. This person has golden bangs. Now of course he does have what to call these kind of well. Purplish violet eyes, and of course having black hair. Now, of course, the work well. He had a strange energy when Shanks noticed. This work well. The person kind of calls out the girl, and the girl's named Junko. This work well. Junko noticed her kind of father, and this is where well, mostly Junko kind of says, "Papa." This is where well. The other man looks at Junko and says, "Are you okay? Where have you been? Didn't I tell you to kind of meet meet me up at the what's it called front of the office?" This is where well. Junko kind of stay quiet until mostly, well, the older man looks up and kind of notices the older looking man, the red haired person. Of course, a kid who was kind of in front of his daughter, kind of giving her the stuffed bear, which, well, yeah, kind of looked like it. And of course, the kid kind of smiling. Now, of course, is where he noticed the girl also. This is where, well, the girl was being called upon by someone with kind of, well, blackish hair. Well, not blackish hair, kind of having golden hair. Of course, like golden blonde hair, and of course, these goldenish eyes. Or, wait. She kind of had golden eyes, and of course, blondish hair. Pretty long blonde hair, and of course, this is where, well, she was kind of like looking for the girl, and this is where, well, she calls the girl's name, we'll see, um, the girl's name was Giselle, and of course, this is where, well, the blackish hair girl kind of noticed her kind of, well, mother. And of course, well, must look like her mother and probably her aunt or whatever. But of course, it worked well. She kind of smiles and says, Mom, this worked well. She kind of hugs the goldenish hair kind of female. And of course, is where she smiles and kind of noticed the other two. Or mostly the other four. The older man that kind of has his kind of daughter, the blondish hair girl, bellish, blondish, kind of pinkish hair girl. And of course, the red hair man who has, well, his mighty son or aunt or probably nephew not aunt mostly nephew this is where well he do, she doesn't really notice until they kind of look at each other this is where shanks already noticed their two powers thanks to the fact of our organization the hockey he kind of noticed that they're really strong which could kind of cause a situation here if well something might happen this is where well Issei kind of walk up to the girl and of course say so your name is Giselle. do you want to become friends Issei kind of said kind of very quiet and shyly but of course this is where the girl smiles and says of course this is where they kind of go up to most of the girl now known Junko and says do you want to become friends they both said this is where Junko kind of nod quietly and of course hiding behind her father and this is where well uh her father just chuckles seeing the situation with the two other kids even if the uh kid with brownish hair and goldenish eyes kind of seems to have was a strange energy but he is human like the mostly the older man noticed but of course this is where well he is a boy, but then again, he can't really stop his daughter from having boys as friends. But yeah, even though he might really want to stop it, he doesn't know what he, what the older man might do. The red hair doesn't work well. They kind of became friends, and of course, they're just happy and cheering at each other. Yay! This is work well. Easy does notice with the car red hair, and this is where we'll see. He said, "Oh, I gotta be going. Bye, guys." This is where Easy kind of just waves at them, and this is where he kind of walks with Shanks, and this is where well, both of them just start walking away. Now, of course, Shanks doesn't have his sword with him because it would kind of act kind of kind of weird if he kind of has a sword at, with him all the time, which Shiro kind of points that out. But this is where Shanks said, "I guess you're right." 
This is where Shanks really doesn't need his sword most of the time. He can easily just defeat his enemies with these goddamn hands. Or should I say one hand? <laughs> because he doesn't really have a hand in his other. Well, you get the point, right? But of course, where, well, Issei is just talking towards mostly Red Hair about his day and how he managed to defeat the bully, knock him out, even though he was still allowed to use Arborman Hawking. Which he apologized to Shanks, but Shanks kind of chuckles, just told him not to tell his mother or also his father because his father probably would say it out loud and say good my boy and uh probably they probably wouldn't get the wrath of well mostly Mika but yeah but of course where, well uh Issei does not and of course is where he smiles at Shanks but yeah <clears throat> this is where well we go into an actual time skip now, of course, there were, well, Issei kind of did move from that kind of, well, place. They weren't mostly in Kuwa Town, but they were at another town near, to well, they were kind of in Tokyo, yeah. I'm going to just say they were in Tokyo. But, of course, they moved to a quieter town. And, of course, this time, Issei is not the age of being kind of 18 years old. Now, we did kind of go into a very far time scope. Don't worry about that. So, it would have been uh, nine years. Well. Why the hell is that saying die? No, 11. So, Issei is now 18. Of course, where, well, Issei is already the height of kind of being like 6. Well, mostly not 6. Mostly like 5'10". Or, not, yeah. He's 5'9", actually. But, of course, where, well, Issei's hair is kind of, well, brownish but gold at the same time. His eyes are kind of gold. And, of course, his personality is quite cheerful, kind, and nice, and other stuff. But of course, this is where well he can also have a very cold personality, but also murderous personality if you dare hurt those that he loves. Now, of course, the school that he's going to used to be a school that was mostly for anyone, but he kind of well mostly his mother kind of realized that she wanted grandchildren. So of course, the best way to kind of get Issei to kind of getting a girlfriend or just so in general and kind of having children with, her, with them will kind of be a new school that kind of just got gender equality, but is mostly dominated by females. And that's mostly other than what's it called, Kuo Academy. So of course, Issei is going there for his senior year. But yeah, this is where Issei side because he was already okay with his old school. He was already, he did get into some fights and some scuffles that some idiots would have fought him against him, but he easily beat the shit out of them. Now, of course, he's going along with his two other best friends. Now, in his old school, yeah, they're pretty much your best friends, but they're also going to this school, not because of the female population, and no, it's not because of their parents, it's because one actually wants to kind of get into a good college with his athlete sports, and the other wants to just kind of learn a lot of technology so he can actually support his family, well, in technology and other stuff, but yeah, or not not support his family just kind of become like a scientist or whatever when he's older but yeah one is extremely smart one is extremely strong now of course they can also have different powers mostly that of uh, something called sacred gear which they don't really use it they do train their bodies on it but they don't really need to use it right now of course they're really best they're pretty much best friends with what they call Issei Issei is mostly kind I, I did mention a lot of things but yeah but of course, he's a little bit taller than both of them, but yeah. Now, of course, they were, well, they're kind of 5'8", but yeah. This is where one guy kind of has bald hair, just because the reason why he's kind of bald is because, well, hair kind of gets annoying when he's uh, doing sports and other things, so he'd rather kind of stay bald, and he kind of... He kind of wants to become buff a little bit and remind, reminding him too much of that Western kind of show. Or mostly the Western actor name was called a Rock and he just wants to become the Rock. <laughs> this is where, well, his name is Matsui, but of course where next to him is mostly a person with glasses. Kind of like smooth black, jet black hair. Of course, where, well, he kind of has his glasses to be kind of round. But of course, where, well, he usually covers his eyes with the glasses for some reason having fog. But it really doesn't bother him. But this is where, well, he's kind of the smart one out of everyone in this group. But he, he's pretty much just extremely smart. And the one thing he wants to be in kind of when he's older is kind of be like that Western kind of movies uh, named Marvel. And that one person in that kind of mostly in the movies. So what's it called? Iron Man. And what's it called? Marvel. That one character named Iron Man. Motherfucker. Tony Stark. 
the Playboy billionaire. This is where, well, he just wants to be a billionaire. Not really a Playboy, but yeah, he just wants to be kind of smart like that. Which, they're kind of going to the school, but yeah. This is where, well, when the school kind of opened in the beginning, well, not in the beginning, they're kind of going into it, like, in the middle of the semester, but yeah, or not even in the middle. Like, the kind of beginning-ish middle, but yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> Sorry if I, yeah. Now, of course, this is where, well, now, of course, this is where, well, Issei is kind of getting to the school. Of course, he's wearing the school uniform, which he fucking hates it because he just loves wearing his actual regular clothes for school. Mostly his old school because they really didn't give a shit that was what you actually wear. But yeah. Now, in his old school, what he usually wears in the casual kind of outfit was basically a black coat. That being like similar to that of a pirate, because it reminds him way too much of his uncle. And of course, usually wearing a white button-up shirt that usually shows his like muscles and chest. Which, not really, he kind of just wear a white shirt underneath. Or kind of a black shirt, but don't wear any better. He wear kind of these black kind of like, black short pants. We're not short pants, mostly black, uh... Well, black sweats. And of course, just fucking sandals. Well, mostly socks with sandals being a menace, okay? Don't worry about it. That's where, well, he usually kind of wears like that and doesn't really give a shit in his old school. Which, not many people really care because he's nice, extremely, well, smart in other things. And then some other girls kind of extremely cute in other things. But of course, in the other gangster leader's eyes, mostly extremely strong and powerful and kind of a leader type. Yes, most of the gangsters in his old school literally feared him and respect him at the same time. And some of them literally bowed down towards Issei, like Issei like it was the leader of all the gangsters. Which he wasn't, he just didn't want to be bothered most of the time. But when people would literally piss him off with just one look. And some of the gangsters rumors throughout the whole school. And one look, he would literally faint in an instant. That's just because Issei used a little bit of his conqueror's hawking to knock your ass out. And so many people just think of the death look. They basically make rumors of that look. If you get that look... You're dead. You're going to get knocked the fuck out and you won't wake up until next year. Some people literally just make the rumors kind of exploding around there. Which made Issei, well, not still like a terrible person. Which made Issei kind of become like a ruler. A very powerful ruler. But at the same time, Issei didn't want to be bothered that much like that. Issei didn't care that much. Now, of course, there is also rumors with Masui and Morahama. Morahama... The scientist, the evil scientist that would experiment on your body, that would turn you into half machine and half human. But also, mo like most of the gangsters literally just thought about that, but yeah. Because Motoham was always a smart one and always has chemicals around him, which not many gangsters realize that would be a bad idea if they get chemicals on them. Because he might have acid or something, and their body might melt. This is where Motohama might feel bad and might turn their bodies into a metal machine type. Yeah, they realize they probably watched way too much sci-fi. <laughs> because, well, yes, you see here, Motohama did watch a lot of sci-fi. in Western shows with sci-fi and other things. Which, yeah, they don't want to deal with Motohama. Now, for Masui, they just call him the fucking Rock. The Hulk. Rock, whatever. So many people watch so many action movies, so of course. They just don't want to fight against the strongest one out of their group. And someone that could probably knock you out and send you into the next week. But yeah, or send you into the next year. But yeah, with just one punch. But yeah, also some people literally call him Saitama or the Ball's Cape. Which really pissed off Matsui a lot. But he didn't really care because he would have clocked those motherfuckers in an instant. So yeah. Of course, the work, well. You say he's now wearing the uniform, which he fucking hates. Of course, the work, well. He doesn't really have his like uniform all kind of zipped up and very nice or anything. Now, Morahama and Masui don't even have it either. They're kind of wearing different color of a shirt. Now, of course, Issei isn't wearing a red kind of shirt. He's wearing like a black one. This is where, well, Matsui kind of has a white tank top underneath, but yeah. But of course, that's mostly when he kind of gets into a athlete or whatever sport in the after school. He doesn't care which one it is. He just hopes it's pretty good. The team is good. Or he's just going to dip and find another team because he doesn't want to deal with trash-ass teammates. But yeah. Now, this is where Motohama just hopes to get a club that knows what the fuck they're doing. Like, 
he hopes that the club of what's it called technology, either scientists or whatever bullshit, knows what the fuck they're doing, knows exactly what the fuck they're doing, because if they don't, he doesn't care. He won't join any club anymore. He would just go back home. But yeah. But yeah. Now, Issei. He is not expecting to join any club because he doesn't care that much. And he doesn't really care about the whole girl domination over the gender of the boy population. But yeah. Now, of course, when Issei and the others were walking to school, this is where, well, Issei said, damn, I really wish I could wear my black coat. He kind of said, this is where, well, Matsui Mother Hamba said, she had, you really like that black coat a lot. Why is that? This is where Issei says, it reminds me way too much of my uncle. A very powerful man that could have knocked you out in an instant. This is where Matsui says, oh yeah, I forgot about your uncle. Damn, when you told me about your uncle, she had, I really wanted to fight him. He probably would have knocked you out one hit. This is where Masui says, uh-uh, he, I'll fight him. I'll show him what, shoot, what these hands can do. Nah, I, I am not getting knocked out by someone with red hair. Uh-huh, he says, head, just casually. This is where, well, Marahama is saying, well, where's your uncle right now anyway? This is where, well, Issei said, uh, you can say that he's back home. So, of course, not really back home with my parents, but he's back home where he came from. But, yeah. This is where, well, Matsui Murahama can notice that he's vague, but of course, they don't really care that much. <coughs> this is where, well, Murahama says, well, shit, I can't even wear my own scientist coat. You see here, I want to wear a white scientist coat. You're not the only one with no coat. I want to wear my scientist coat. So I should mention, yes, Murahama did wear a uh, scientist coat. While, well, well, Matsui usually wear what's called an athlete kind of outfit most of the time either basketball he was like really good in a bunch of stuff like basketball football soccer you get that point so he was good in a lot of things but of course he wish he could just wear his athlete stuff but yeah he can't he can't wear like half of his jerseys that he usually kind of go to but yeah <sighs> this is where well they're kind of just walking to school, and when they get to school, they kind of see a bunch of, like, females. Mo like, mostly a ton of females. This is where, well, they can barely see one dude. This is where, well, Issei said, uh, guys, do you think we're in the right school? That's where Motohaba pulls out his phone and kind of search up on Google Maps and say, uh, yeah, we are on the right, right school. This is called, cool. Cool, so high school or cool college? Should be the high school. Yeah, this is a high school. I don't see that many males. Didn't they say they were open for males and girls? Then again, it used to be a whole girl population, mostly dominant of girls. So that could be because there's not many guys kind of coming in. <sighs> that sucks. Why is that? What happened with the girls when they just decided to target us? I don't want to be targeted by the girls. And your good looks or what? This is where, well, mostly more how much chuckles. Mostly kind of, like, mentions that. This is where Issei scoffs and says, no, nah, not that. Mostly what happens is they just target us for no other reason than concluding us at perverts for joining the school. Mostly more how then thinks about it and says, that is true. <coughs> this is where they're walking. And, of course, where, well, Murahama says, still, we're not really perverts anyway. This is where, well. Mostly he says, yeah, pretty much I just cares about going into an af well, well, mostly an athlete sport of club. And I hope their uh, athlete clubs are actually pretty good. I hope it's, I don't care if it's a girl or a guy right now being good at the team. I would join and I will see how good their teamwork is. If they're not, I literally don't care that much. I would go, I would go back to my old school. I would literally join their team and won't give two dams <laughs> if I have to go against school. This is where, well, he's mentioning. Because he does mention how, was it called, in their old school, even though it was full of gangsters and other things, they were still pretty good. They listened to mostly Matui's commands when it was actually time for, like, sports and other stuff. But, yeah. Now, of course, the where, well, Motohama says, if they're a fucking team of scientists or robotics or any of that trash, Leah, I will go back to the school. I agree with what's it called, Matui. This is where Matui says, yeah, man, see ya, told you. This is where, well, Issei scoffs and says, Motherfucker, if this school is trash, I'm literally going back to my old school. I don't care what my parents said. I don't care what my mother said. I know I'm going to get the wrath of a woman from my mother. But you see here, 
If this school's trash, I'm literally going back to ball school. <laughs> this is where Monohama Matsui did not They're saying, yeah, that is true. This is where some of the females are hearing what the guys are talking about. Which, they kind of get annoyed with what they call mostly the guys. But of course, when they see Issei's face, he's actually quite handsome. And most of the girls start falling in love for him. Now, of course, the word, well, mostly the other two, like Monohama and Matsui, there isn't like what they call that behind. Because they actually did work on their looks in this time. Mostly, well, Matsui didn't look, uh, kind of work on his looks. He mostly looks like a scientist. But kind of a good looking scientist, but yeah. And Motohama, he didn't really work on his looks, but he just looks like a bulky, what's it called, rock. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Not a bulky rock. He's still not that bald because his hair is literally growing back, but yeah. <laughs> but of course, we're, well, we go into mostly them getting to class. Now, of course, we're, well, Issei had to go to a different class because, yeah, he was 18. While, well, Matsui and Motohama, they're also 18, but they had to go into a different class. Now, of course, this is where Issei is getting towards his class, and this is where he knocks, because he was actually put in, what's it called, 3A? Yeah, 3A class. This is where, when he knocks, the teacher say, ah, yes, uh, wait. This is where, well, the teacher was like a female teacher, and of course, when she opens the door, and she says, oh, you must be the new student. Hmm. Yeah, come in. This is where, well, Issei said, yes. This is where, when he walks in, he noticed that the whole population of class of, well, mostly 3A, it's mostly a bunch of females. This work, well, he said was still dumbfounded. Yeah, he hasn't seen a single male, well, he has, like, a couple males, but a couple of males. Still, the whole female domination thing is still a thing. Well, he's kind of shocked, but whatever. There was not even a single male in this classroom, unless they were hiding and they were actually kind of Tom girl, whatever bullshit, which, that would suck, but yeah. But of course, the word, well, Issei introduced himself to being Issei Hyoro. Well, Issei D, well, he was about to say Issei D Hyoro, but he then said Issei Hyoro. Now, of course, he didn't mention about the D, but yeah. Because, yes, that's his full name, Issei D Hyoro. But, yeah. Or, mostly it was Issei D Gold. Well, yeah, Gold. Yeah. Nah. Wait, what, uh, what am I talking about? So, Issei's full name is Issei D. King uh, Hyoro, but yeah, King just means gold, but don't worry about that. Now, the D is, you already need to know about that, it's just uh, the name of the D clan, but don't worry about it. But of course, it's where, well, Issei just mentioned that his name is Issei Hyoro. This is where, well, Issei kind of just looks at the girls, and most of the girls seem to kind of have hearts already for Issei. His golden eyes, mostly his golden brownish eyes, makes him look great. His brownish hair that kind of has like yellow highlights similar to that gold. But mostly makes a bunch of girls really still fall in love for him. But yeah. Which Issei gets quite, 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 how should I say, unnerved. Because he isn't expecting a like classroom full of love to literally go after him. Or love or lust or whatever. Usually in his old school it was either, either what's it called? Like a um, look of battle. Battle, angry, anger just trying to get uh, the top position or a bunch of things mostly his usually his old classrooms contains of uh, some females some dudes normal dudes not gangsters and just gangsters most of the time which he didn't really mind he would have just beat the shit of the gangsters and just kicked them out of the way but yeah but in this he's quite unnerved now of course where well he's sweat dropping this is where well the teacher said is there any other questions if trying to ask Hyoro here Mr. Hyoro this is where, well, a bunch of girls kind of question him if he has a girlfriend or not. This is where, well, Issei said, no, and not trying to have one. Mm, I really don't care. Issei said very casually. This is where the girl sees that Issei seems to really not care about having a girlfriend, but some girls would try to anyway. This is where, well, someone kind of seeing, well, narrowing their eyes at, well, Issei. They mostly have the tealish, bluish eyes or reddish hair. And of course, the word, well. They're never in the ice because they feel a little bit of power of Issei, which Issei noticed what you call also the girl. He kind of uses arborization knocking to notice if anyone was looking at him, which with the keen eye of power, which he then noticed the girl. Yeah, she had this weird aura of kind of that, like a demon. He does notice about the whole supernatural bullshit, but he's not getting into that. <coughs> this will work well. This will work well. Issei kind of, well kind of like answers a bunch of questions that were kind of boring, didn't really care. This is where, well, 
the teacher said, okay, you will be sitting next to Grimmery. This is where, well, everyone saw Grimmery, and some of them had a kind of look of jealousy, but yeah. This is where, well, Grimmery really didn't look at Isu with kind of love or anything or less. But of course, mostly all the girls are looking at her with either kind of this angry intent, but some people just have jealous. And this is where, well, they would now think that mostly Hyoto is going to fall in love for Grimmery because of her beauty. This is where when Isu sat down, he didn't look at Grimmery that much. He looked at her once and just said hello and then sat down. This is where so many girls see that Issa is quite respectful and this isn't that much of a pervert. This is where, well, Issa isn't just talking to Grimmery or anything, falling in love or any of that because he knows that she's literally a fucking devil. Yeah, no. <laughs> he doesn't know how old she is, but yeah, he doesn't care. This is where, well, Issei is literally going through the classroom, of course, still having a bunch of looks on him, either by the whole classroom or by glances by Grimmery. And this is where, well, he gets quite annoyed. He doesn't say much, but he just says whatever. This is where, when the class is over, he kind of looks for his next classroom, and when he kind of walks in, this time it's ceramics, and next to him is his two friends. This is where the other other friends. Mostly smart friend and idiotic, but yeah. This is where, well, they say, so how was first hour? This is where they kind of see Issei. Issei says, it's terrible. So many fucking girls looked at me. I was, oh God, hell no, I am not getting used to this fucking place. This is where, well, his two friends chuckle. This is where Motohama say, same. This place is so confusing. Usually in the old school, no one looked at me that much. Either the, what's it called, gangster looked at me out of fear. Female looked at me at somewhat lust. And guys just looked at me scared also because of my title of the math scientist. This is where, well, Matsui says, you think that was scary? So many people ask me and why I had no hair. Motherfucker, I'm a literally athlete. And this is where when girls looked at me with a little bit of lust because I was a little bit bulky. You notice that, guys. But yes, he's kind of a little bit bulky more than normal. But of course, this is where, well, he kind of says that. It was confusing. It looked like some of the girls were literally seeing through my clothes. This is where Masui said, it's just scared. Like, what the fuck is wrong with people in this place? This is where, well, Motohama and Issei just feels bad. Like, if someone literally looking through what's it called, Masui clothes, Masui is kind of embarrassed. But yeah. But of course, with that, this is where they're just talking. And of course, where, well, in this classroom seems to be an equal amount of girls and guys. Not really. Still, there's a lot of girls dominating. But of course, guys, there's some, but yeah. Now, of course, it's where, well, uh, what's it called? Easy? Well, yeah. <laughs> they kind of just learn about ceramics in this place, but yeah. But of course, it's where they kind of go on with the whole day. Until Easy kind of felt too familiar presence, like he felt them before, probably when he was younger. Their signature of energy might be a little bit different and much bigger, but of course, he does notice who they are. He just doesn't know exactly where they're at. But of course, where, well, he kind of spots himself and saying, So, Junko, Giselle, he said it quite whisperly. But his friend says, huh, you said something? He says, no, of course not. Let's just go. This is where, well, they're kind of walking, of course, where they're getting next to their class. And they're actually in some classes, but yeah. But this is where I'm actually going to leave it off right now. So yeah, have a nice day, night, and other things, and I just gotta go, bye.